online. Every year offers a variety of theatrical hits and misses, but in 2019, no studio was in the same stratosphere as the Walt Disney Company. Disney was king in 2019, and in hindsight, it may have been the peak of Disney's decadence. Disney held seven of the top ten positions at the domestic and global box office. All seven of those movies broke the one billion dollar mark worldwide, a record number. They also played a hand in a seven billion dollar movie in Spider-Man Far From Home. Disney banked an astounding 13 billion dollars at the worldwide box office in 2019. Domestically, Disney-owned properties accounted for 38% of all movie-going. The top five grossing movies of the year were Disney productions at the domestic box office. It seemed as if nothing could stop Disney's dominance. Even in the age of modern, IP-driven franchise filmmaking, Disney was in a league of its own. Although some lamented the studio's near monopolization of movie theaters, such as Martin Scorsese, the Disney empire showed little signs of coming to an end. The filmmaking business was becoming a zero-sum game. You were either a live-action remake of The Lion King, or you were cats. It's a fine line to walk in this business, one that not even Disney would be immune to, as they would soon prove there's no such thing as too big to fail. If you were to take a closer look at Disney's top grossing films of 2019, you would find that all of them are either franchise movies, sequels, or remakes. Avengers Endgame, Toy Story 4, Frozen 2, Captain Marvel, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, The Lion King, and Aladdin, were all symptomatic of a much bigger problem taking place within Disney, a problem that still persists to this day, and a problem that contributed to the hole that they currently find themselves in. Ever since Bob Chapek took over as CEO in February 2020, Disney has been going through one of the most tumultuous periods in the company's history. Unfortunately, last year only added to their trouble. Disney's 2023 was nothing short of an absolute nightmare. It was a rosy time to be Bob Iger in May 2023. It looked as if a new day was dawning on the company. Disney had a bright outlook with a strong summer slate of theatrical releases. However, by Labor Day, Iger would find that nobody was working, the company's stock price was plummeting, Disney wasn't on the air in several networks around the country, and all of their movies ended up losing the company hundreds of millions of dollars. Although the focus of Disney's big box office losses in 2023 primarily focus on their summer releases, the first crack in Disney's armor came in February of last year with the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Despite a strong opening weekend, Quantumania saw a 69% drop-off in its second week and a 61% drop in its third week. Due to an overinflated budget and failing to break $1 billion, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania lost Disney an estimated $79.5 million. The third installment of the Ant-Man franchise was also the first Marvel movie to be universally panned in quite some time. This poor critical and commercial performance confirmed what many have already suspected, the steady decline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Disney's poor box office fortunes continued once summer began after the company decided to premiere Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny at the Cannes Film Festival. The movie received a divisive reaction from attending critics, leaving it with a rotten score on Rotten Tomatoes. Despite the limited number of reviews, as long as audiences see that green splat, Dial of Destiny was doomed before it even got off the ground. By the time it premiered on June 30th, 2023, it was a certified box office bomb, 
with an estimated production budget of 294 million, the movie needed to grow 600 million dollars just to break even and gross about 800 million in order to turn a profit. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny lost Disney 200 and 14 million dollars. The live-action remake of The Little Mermaid did not fare much better. Despite a strong opening weekend of 569 million worldwide, The Little Mermaid did not have legs, no pun intended, after its opening weekend and performed poorly internationally. Elemental may have been Disney's most interesting release of the year. Pixar's latest release open to only $29.5 million. This marked the second lowest opening three-day weekend for a Pixar film since the release of Toy Story in 1995. Despite a poor opening weekend, Elemental proved to have staying power and eventually found its audience. Despite the movie finding a second wind, it ultimately lost $89.7 million, and the general consensus is Pixar has failed to regain its esteemed reputation with moviegoers since the beginning of the pandemic, although much of this can be attributed to strategic decisions made by Bob Chapek and other Disney executives during the pandemic. After enduring a brutal summer, Disney would release two more big-budget, high-profile tentpole films that would cement their disastrous 2023. Wish, Disney's highly anticipated animated feature, intended to celebrate the company's centennial, severely underperformed over its five-day Thanksgiving opening weekend. Wish only grossed $31.7 million during the long weekend. The hope internally was that Wish would have staying power similar to that of Elemental. Unfortunately, this never materialized. This was also the first animated Disney film to receive a rotten designation on Rotten Tomatoes since Chicken Little in 2005. For what it's worth, I do not think Wish is anywhere near as bad as Chicken Little. What should have been a celebration of Disney's storied history ultimately cost them an astonishing 235 million dollars. The Marvels proved to be the nail in the coffin after a tepid critical response and 84 million dollar opening weekend. It is the lowest grossing movie in the MCU and its 259 million dollar loss pushed Disney's total 2023 box office losses to 1.3 billion dollars. Disney's only unmitigated box office success of 2023 came in the form of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, turning a profit of 28 million on an 800 million dollar gross worldwide. By now, Disney's failure at the box office last year is well publicized. This is an unthinkable situation for Disney to be in after a dominant stretch in the 2010s. With a catalog that includes Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Pixar, Disney was making money with just about anything they released into theaters. Last year was the first true indication that Disney no longer has the Midas touch it once had. 2023 was the first year Disney did not have a movie break the $1 billion mark since 2014. This is a testament to their box office success. The company set an impossibly high bar for itself in the previous decade, firing every weapon in its arsenal. The only problem with success is that it soon becomes expected every time. Disney was always going to be in a difficult position when the well started to run dry. The theatrical exhibition business is still recovering from the pandemic. That, in combination with the WGA and SAG strikes last year, forced several movies to be pushed back to 2024. Consequently, every studio had to contend with the shrinking global box office last year. While Disney may not have had a top three box office earner in 2023, they still had four of the top ten movies at the worldwide box office. No other studio 
had more than two. In fact, some of Disney's modest successes or outright flops would be considered a hit for some of their rivals. Every studio has suffered setbacks in the post-pandemic world. Blockbusters as a whole struggled last year. Movies such as Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, Fast X, Transformers Rise of the Beast, Dungeons and Dragons, and The Flash all failed to impress at the box office and incurred losses. However, Disney's misses are the most prolific because they own so many IPs. The Walt Disney Company was once untouchable at the box office. Now they find themselves among the mere mortals. Disney's underperformance at the 2023 box office is only notable because of where they were compared to where they are now. Will Disney be able to recover long term? I think the question we should be asking is, will Hollywood be able to recover long term? The problems that plague Disney aren't unique to them alone. The fact is, when the pandemic first began, every major studio embraced short term thinking and went all in on streaming services. This is partially a reason for Pixar's seeming loss of prestige with audiences. Audiences have more or less been trained to expect Pixar films to be released on Disney+, Plus, such as Soul, Luca, and Turning Red. Therefore, audiences don't seem to have the incentive to go to the theater to watch these movies when they could simply wait for them to hit Disney+. Plus. And as we have all learned, the streaming wars proved to be a fool's errand, as streaming services are now recording significant losses. So, again, the question has to be, will Hollywood recover? Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the second installment of the Disney discussion, part three will be coming soon, and it is the final installment. This episode focused a lot on box office numbers, which I will provide a link for in the description. It wasn't so heavy on the names like the previous episode, but there was a lot of numbers involved, and I did create some graphics to hopefully provide some clarity for Disney's box office situation last year, because the truth is it wasn't just Marvel and Star Wars and Disney releases that lost money. There were several movies from Fox that lost money as well. So that's the reason I included that. And part three will be coming soon. And unless something drastic happens, it should be the final installment in this series. Once again, Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Peace, plants, namaste.